grab your big book, your pen, your highlighter, and notepad and get ready to hear and apply some of the solution from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous through the experience, strength, and hope of Nikki M. To have a question addressed in a future episode of Noodle It Out with Nikki, please send an email to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com and Nikki is spelled with two Ks. To get a more interactive experience with Nikki as she noodles out life and recovery questions using the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you can get a link to her weekly Noodle It Out with Nikki meeting held live on Zoom every Monday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The information to that meeting is in the show notes of this podcast. God morning, God afternoon, and God evening to all. My name is Justin B, and I am a son of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a qualifying addict of multiple fellowships, living in the miracle of recovery, and I'm here with the intelligent agent, spearhead of God's ever-advancing creation, and my co-host, Nikki M. Nikki M, say hi, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Nikki M, and I'm a loving child of God, according to this book, is what this book says. I've got a loving, all-powerful God, so that must make me a loving all-powerful spearhead child of God. So I'm just excited today in, I live in Toronto, Canada, and it's, it's, um, it's Thanksgiving and mom overcooked the turkey. So I'm gonna have to put a lot of mayonnaise on my sandwich. That's just, that's my biggest problem today. And, you know, I, I'm not complaining. I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dry turkey is better than no turkey, right? <laughs> awesome. All right. So, so, Thank you, Nikki, for introducing yourself. Just a little bit about RICO 12. We've got lots of resources out there to learn about them. Check out the show notes of, of uh, in the podcast here. Uh, go to RICO12.com, R-E-C-O-1-2.com, and just check out what uh, what we've got out there. All of this does take a little bit of uh, resources to run. So I invite you to consider becoming a spearhead and supporting um, RICO 12 through a, you know, similar to a, a seventh tradition. Give what you what you feel your higher power is guiding you to give. You can do that. The links are also in the, the show notes of the podcast, or you can go to rico12.com forward slash support and check it out because these uh, amazing resources do take some uh, money to run. So thank you in advance for any small, large, monthly, one-time, whatever it is, donations that you choose to make. All right, this project called Noodle It Out with Nikki M, is an exercise and deep dive into finding solutions to questions, issues, everyday items that we encounter in life from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Now I'm going to bring a question or two from my own life, from the lives of people I work with in recovery, from lives that Nikki interacts with. We've got some questions that come to us. And then we bring those things to the big book. If you have a question that you'd like to have addressed in this, please send an email to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com. Nikki has two Ks. And uh, we'll address those questions at a future time. Uh, so everybody grab your big book, get ready to run around in it and make some notes as we're going to see what what does the book say. Nikki, today, the question I have for you is one that came to me through um, through one of my sponsees just uh, last night in his writings. He he wrote this and uh, and I'm going to bring it to you because I think it's it's one that I've heard many times and I'm excited to hear what uh, what your take and what the book's take is on it. Okay, the question is, I have an old resentment that I have given to God many, many times. Each time I do, I am relieved of that resentment for a while, but it keeps coming back. How do I handle these recurring resentments that I give over, I I abandon, and then it comes back again at some point when something reminds me of it? How do I do that? What does the book say? Well, the book says a lot about resentments okay it does say a lot i mean everyone thinks it's a the drinking problem the bottles but a symptom or the whatever problem it's just a symptom this centers in our mind and i just like to just go right to page 66 and does everyone know you know i google the word of course resentment the lat you know it, it goes to to feel to refeel a hurt an injury or an injustice over and over again. So you're refeeling this refeeling of a hurt injury. Okay. And then page 66 right here says it's plain that a life, and I put my life, I put Nikki's life, which includes deep resentments above there, Justin, I put including fear 
leads only to futility and unhappiness. My line out, I will die. To the precise extent that I permit these, permit what? Any resentment, do I squander the hours? I squandered some decades, Justin. I'm, um, you know, I'm 50, so decades that might have been worthwhile. But with the addict or the person who suffers from the disease of alcoholism, the family disease, moms, cousins out there, whose hope is the maintenance and growth of a spiritual experience. And we need this experience every day. Remember, we we can't, uh, I stay clean off yesterday's great shower. No, you don't. This business of resentments is infinitely grave. Line out, I will die. We found it is fatal. Line out, I will die. For when harboring such feelings, what feelings? Replaying an injury, a hurt, or an injustice. I shut myself off from the sunlight of the spirit. I will die without sunlight. The insanity of thinking, the insanity of obsessing about how much that person or blah, blah, blah returns. And I drink, I think, I use, I act out. I get under someone to get over someone and destroy families and relationships. And with me to think, to act out is to die. So I think it was five or six times we read we're going to die. So make sure your sponsees understand it's not the act of whatever they're going to pick up and shove in their orifice. It is the thought that's already inside of them that's going to kill them. Because it says, if I'm going to live, I have to be free of anger, resentments, fear. The grouch and the brainstorm are not for me. See, those are a dubious luxury. So if you are sponsoring, are you drilling this home to your sponsees that you are going to die from your thinking? See, it says, these are a dubious luxury. What is for normal people thinking, being grouchy, being restless, irritable, discontented, being bored, being oh anxious. How about being fearful? I trust an infinite God. And then it says it's poison. And if you did a proper four step with your sponsees, sponsors, guides, with your prospects, you have armed them with the facts that they are to blame. You understand, like, then did you do a proper fourth step? Because it says, it doesn't say what's your part. It says, where am I to blame? I disregard the other person entirely. So another note I had as you were telling me this question is page 616. It's a reoccurring. Well, Justin, maybe you're sponsy on page 16, where it says an alcoholic, a thinker, a addict in their cups in their thoughts is an unlovely creature. They're just refeeling that resentment again and again. And it says, I love the last sentence. See, one poor chap committed suicide and refeeling, blotting out the consciousness of your existence with your sick thinking. Okay, you commit suicide walking dead. It says, maybe your sponsee could not, would not see our way of life. You know, and then I'll take us right to the solution on the way of life because page 275, Nikki, that's in the stories. The stories are helpful if you know how to do the big book dance. I love dancing. Um, page 275 says right here, AA, any anonymous is not a plan for recovery that can be finished and done with. This is a way of life, Justin. It says it right there, everybody. Page 275 Big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, fourth edition. This is a way of life and the challenge. What challenge? Getting over, how about getting over every resentment you've ever had? Because it will kill you. Contained in the principles, the spiritual principles is great enough to keep any human being striving for as long as you live. My line out says forever. See, we do not cannot outgrow this plan. What plan? The plan for living. As arrested addicts, and that means we're stopped. We're stopped from it. We must have a program. Justin, if you take the program out of my cell phone, I'm not going to be able to call you. You have a backup computer. I don't. (laughs) See, it's a program that allows for (laughs) limitless expansion, right? This is forever, Justin. Okay, it's forever. 
I, I love that you took, so, so my page 275 in my big book has never been opened. <laughs> And you took me there, and that that paragraph is just one that I can use in so many aspects of my life. I love that. I'm I'm definitely going to be using that in my recovery. Now, I do want to go back to the and my my work with other addicts. I do want to go back to the uh, the resentment here on this. Um, here's my experience, and I don't help me find where it is in the big book, where something similar to this is in the big book that when a resentment reappears, um, whether it be because I've got sick thinking and I'm dwelling on it, or whether it be something that jumps in uninvited, um, I need to be willing to turn that over to my higher power at least one more time every time, trusting that it will be taken care of. Um, even as frustrating as it is, I was talking to to uh, a brother in recovery. And this is a few weeks ago, and he talked about and he he used the word surrender, and that's that's a word that yes, I know it is does not appear in the big book, but it's one that he uses in his own in his own fellowship. He says, you know, when I first started in this, I had to surrender these feelings of well, we'll just go with what it was feelings of lust, like sixty to eighty times a day. And the same feelings, I had to give it over, give it over. And every time it worked, but then it would come back and it would come back and I just give it over. And now as I continue practicing this, it's, you know, a couple times a week that I have to deal with it. It just gets better and better, but I still have to be willing to give those things over one, one more time every time. So is there anything in the big book that, that corroborates what I just uh, kind of shared from my own experience? Well, it says, I mean, there's so much in the big book and I'm just trying to think, you know, I, what you were saying, but I wrote down this, it's like our thought life. You know, I think we talked about in the last episode, it's like, this is all about our thought life. And so I, it's page, I think it's 85. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane or 86 when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives, page 86, it's page 86. So it has to be your thought life. This is all about your thoughts. And, and so I'm going to say, there's an entire chapter called Into Action. Remind your sponsors, you guys, that it says on page 87. Let's just go here real quick because we're on page 86. You have to have a thought life. It says, top of page 87. And I wrote on the top of my book, Patience and Practice. Just I wrote it because this is what why. What used to be the hunch, okay, or the occasional inspiration gradually. See, this is not an overnight matter. It gradually becomes a working part of your mind. My line out, second nature. This is a step 11 promise. It gradually, see, I'm still an experienced. Justin, you and I are doing a round table with, um, with David G and my, our, both of our brains are exploding constantly. I've been here 11 years. I've been seven years in the big books uh, in the big book. And I'm seeing sentences and words that are, I'm like, where did that sentence come from? Because I'm just, this is a treasure map. It just goes deep. I don't know. I've, I, I, I'm in the room with a friend and he's like, I don't know how it works. It just works. And that's the truth of this. This is a magic book. So it says, it's not probable that I'm going to be inspired at all times. I'm going to pay for this presumption that I, all my resentments are going to be on that. I'm going to do it perfect. That I'm going to surrender, abandon everything to God, I'm going to pay for this. But I will find another promise that my thinking, see, these are key words too, everybody. The promises are true. Justin, remind your, your sponsor. It's like, it says your thinking will, not might, not probably. It says your thinking will. It says God will do for us. It says we will know a new freedom and happiness. So back to page 87, where it says, our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. This is a lifestyle. Like, it's like, oh, what? Oh, you chose Scientology? And I was, I don't know why I default there. Tom Cruise jumping on the couch is probably the reason, that image. But it's like, um, oh, you chose that. Or you're a Mormon, or you chose to be a, a, a Amish, or you chose to be a Rasta. This is the path you chose. That's great. I chose the big book path. I believe the big book. I stay here and I don't go anywhere. It works. 
So, you know, it's all over into action. And here's one more thing that, um, you know, Cameron F who, who runs the, our workshop where we use this workbook out of he, if you're like in a relapse or you can't let some work your steps backwards. Number one, are you sponsoring and carrying the message? Are you praying and meditating? Are you continuing to take keyword sponsees and sponsors in the human race personal inventory? Because I continue to take my prime minister's inventory and it doesn't work out for me. Step eight, do I have a list of all the people I have harmed? Because every day I'm adding to it and subtracting and adding. It's an ongoing list. I, you know, I, I said something to my cousin yesterday. It was like, you were late. And I, I, I got real like, you're late for turkey dinner and you have the veggies. Like, make it make sense, okay, cousin? Anyway, long story short, she's probably on my list to be a little nicer to in the future. Remember, my behavior will convince them more. Step six and seven, go back. Am I literally admitting my wrongs to somebody or am I just holding it in because it's not that important? Am I, am I step three, giving my life every day, taking a sincere position to perform this work? Everybody, people in the back, well... Not perfect, you perfectionists. Number two, am I living insane or am I really, here's insanity. We talked about it, I think, last episode. But again, there's another version I want to talk about, which is like, am I accepting less than what God intended for me, Justin? That's insane. Come on. Oh, because I'm like, oh, well, I'm not Tina Turner. Well, you're not supposed to be, Nikki. That was Tina Turner's job. You're supposed to be Nikki M. Justin B is supposed to be Justin B. I can I cannot accept less than what God intended for me. And God did not intend for me to blot out the consciousness of my existence, ruminating the grouch and the brainstorm on resentments because my past is my greatest asset. The future is that God will do for me. And may I find God now. And I have to start with a step one every day. I'm powerless. I need God. Yeah, awesome. Hi on God dope, everybody. You get a, you get some, you get some, we all get some. <laughs> I'll take some, I'll take some. Thank you so much, Nikki. And that, that phrase, the, that, that, that other definition of insanity that you just put out there, uh, accepting less than what God intended for me, just my mind just blew up right there. Um, because, and, and I'm a perfectionist, so I can take that to the extreme. I can take that to the extreme and go, Oh, I fell short again today. I suck. I'm, I didn't live up to what God intended for me. So, uh, you know, I suck. I beat myself up that way. But it's a good barometer. Am I striving towards? Am I aiming towards? Am I, am I, am I progressing towards what God intends for me? And I think that's really a really good example and a, a definition for insanity. Thank you for opening my eyes to that. Um, yeah, I think I think that's all I've got to say. Is there anything else you have to say on this topic, Nikki? Page 12. Page 12, everybody. It says, why don't you choose your own conception of God? So get the most powerful God in the world here, please, everybody. One that you don't have a resentment because you're like, I can't believe God loves me this much. Like it's in your thinking. It says... Down here, like Bill W. So I'm Bill W. We're all Bill W's. We have to be convinced that this God that we want, this power is concerned with us when we want it enough. Not when we want that need to be right, that resentment, that drug, that, you know, drug of non-choice, that, that fear. No, want this love and this power and this respect of self enough. I had needed and wanted God and his presence, page 12, had been blotted out by worldly calamiters, mostly those within myself. Everyone stop beating yourself up. You know, it's it, 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 this is so simple, but it's not easy. This is a program of love and tolerance. Justin, thanks for loving me in my bathrobe and, and on this Thanksgiving day and just, you know, really just... You know, we don't know the effect that this podcast will have years from now. And I'm I'm just grateful. And I hope that one person is affected by this somewhere out there because, you know, this is all about love. And I love you and I love everyone listening. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you for that. Yeah. I love you, too. This is good stuff. Everybody, remember, there is one who has all power. That one is God. May you find God. <laughs>